Chapter 374 to 376. Questioned by Hiruzen, Danzo suddenly had a guilty look, although it was only momentary it did not escape Sandame's sharp eyes. Hiruzen ordered with a serious look, Danzo, confess. Danzo has kept a lot of secrets from Hokage. Especially related to the experiments on Shodame sama's cell transplantation. Even after Orochimaru defected, he did not stop on these experiments and had continued them all this time. Therefore, in the face of sudden questioning from Sandame, he was unable to deal period. Koharu asked with a frowned expression, Hiruzen, what happened that would prompt you to question on such a matter? Sandame answered while his gaze was still fixated on Danzo, remember the shinobi named Tobi I mentioned? Mitokado asked, the one who can use a space-time jutsu even superior to Yandame's. Hiruzen nodded and continued, yes him, aside from a space-time jutsu superior to Yandame, he also possesses Mokutan Kekiai Genkai. Mokutan. Both Koharu and Hamura were taken aback. Sandame nodded and eyed Danzo to fess up everything he knows about this Mokutan user. Sandame has made many speculations about the true identity of Tobi. In his opinion, Tobi being a Senju who awakened Mokutan is very less. This is because even among the history of the Senju clan, only Senju Hashirama is known to have awakened Mokutan. No one other than him has awakened Mokutan. Not even his younger brothers, children, or grandchildren who are closest to him genetically. This proves that Mokutan is not a simple hereditary Kekiai Genkai. Therefore, the only possibilities that are left are self-awakening which is completely unrelated to him being a Senju or Hashirama cell transplantation. Danzo sighed, and while pretending to be helpless, he said, it is probably because of my lack of careful supervision on, your disciple, Orochimaru that such a thing has happened. I never expected that, your disciple, will take advantage of, my, kindness. Sandame did not interrupt and his gaze was still fixed on Danzo. Seeing Hiruzen's sharp eyes, Danzo had to continue, as, you, already know, great ambitions lurks inside, your disciple, he managed to steal Shodame sama's cells as well as the records of past experimentation from the restricted section because of the poor supervision of, your ANBU, afterward, he started bloody experiments on small children, when I got a hint of the deeds of, your disciple, I immediately went to apprehend him, as you already know. But he is a shrewd one, he had caught wind that I was coming to apprehend him and managed to escape. Sandame still did not budge and spoke, and... Danzo spoke with a bitter look. And, and, your disciple, had actually succeeded in this, one of the subjects, your disciple, chose successfully survived the transplantation of Shodame sama's cells and awakened Mokutan. What? Both Koharu and Hamura stood up from their seats in shock. Sandame's expression was gloomier upon learning Danzo's words. Originally, he was pretty skeptical about the second possibility. He believed that Tobi might have naturally awakened Mokutan just like he uses a uniquely superior space-time jutsu. Unexpectedly, Hashirama cell transplantation experiments were being conducted in secrecy without his knowledge. Not only that, there is even a child who survived and awakened Mokutan. Sandame suppressed his anger, and questioned, where is that child? Danzo sighed, when, your disciple, defected, he took that child with him. Blame me for being too weak to be able to stop, your disciple, from stealing away Kanoha's future. Sandame said, I want all the information you have about that child, every last bit of it. Understand? Sarutobi Hiruzen undoubtedly believes that the child Orochimaru has taken away is Tobi. This also explains why he can use a space-time jutsu even superior to Yandame Hokage. After all, Orochimaru was also a member of the Akatsuki. Although they are currently unaware of the exact status of Orochimaru, whether he is still part of it or has defected from Akatsuki because he did not participate or even appeared in any battle during the raid, he did join at some point and that's unchangeable. So, it is very reasonable that the child Orochimaru once took with him is also a part of Akatsuki. Seeing that the matter has been exposed, Danzo could no longer conceal it and relayed all the information he had about that child. After he had received all the information, Sandame's expression turned indifferent and he said, Shimura Danzo, for the crime of concealing valuable information from the village's leader, as well as, conducting forbidden experiments without any permission from the village's leader, in the name of Sandame Hokage, the leader of Kanoha, I dismiss you from the leader of Root Subdivision. At the same time, the Root Subdivision will be disbanded and will be unified into a single Umbu unit under the command of Hokage. Danzo stood up in anger, Hiruzen, it was, your disciple Orochimaru's doings. I tried my best st. Before Danzo could finish his words, Sandame waved his hand without even looking at Danzo's face, there is no need to act innocent, you have as much involvement in this as Orochimaru. Some parts Danzo has said are indeed true, and Hiruzen does not deny it but. Danzo is not fooling anyone here. If it was previously, Hiruzen may have turned a blind eye to this information, but, the current situation is no longer the same. Both Elder Mitokado and Elder Koharu looked at each other and chose to remain silent. If Sandame had given such an order in normal times, they might have raised objections, but, the current situation is not normal. 
The threat Kanoha is facing currently is no longer normal, and concealing information from the leader of the village is a serious crime that Danzo has committed that has even given birth to a rogue mean Toby. As such both the elders had no objection to Sandame's orders. Angered, Danzo immediately started walking towards the door of the room to leave even though the meeting was unfinished. Neither Sandame nor the other two elders stopped him. Just when he was at the door, he tapped his crutch on the floor, and said, Do not forget Hiruzen, Orochimaru's most likely and most capable spy, that is Hyuga Kuroto still lurks in the village. You mentioned that Orochimaru was not at the base of Akatsuki during the raid, who is to say if Hyuga Kuroto did not give out the intelligence of the incoming raid on Akatsuki to Orochimaru? Who is to say if the very intelligence of Akatsuki's base being located in Amagekure was found by Hyuga Kuroto himself, and not passed on to him by Orochimaru? Who is to say whether Hyuga Kuroto did not betray the village to Akatsuki just like Orochimaru? You should choose who you trust carefully. Watch you back Hiruzen, otherwise, who knows if your trusted Umbu might become the cause of your, Danzo did not finish, and left. From beginning to end, Sandame did not even glance at Danzo. Click. Shut. After Danzo had left, Elder Yudatane spoke, Hiruzen, about what Danzo said in regards to Hyuga Kuroto. Sandame thought about Danzo's words, at the same time he also remembered the shinobi named Hyuga Kuroto. If that is the case then I want to learn Yandim Sama's Rasengan. And after a long silence, he said with a mild smile, no need to worry. Hyuga Kuroto, is a Kanoha shinobi. I have observed him for the past few years, as well as, taken regular input from Kakashi about Hyuga Kuroto, the child may share some similarities with Orochimaru, but, essentially, he is different from Orochimaru, sometimes, he reminds me of Minato. I am not really sure as to why that is. But I have started to feel as such, therefore, I believe he will not betray the village to Akatsuki. As for his relationship with Orochimaru. I think there is no need to worry about that as well. Yudatane and Mitokado glanced at each other then finally nodded towards Sandane. If Hokage trusts him, then that's all that matters. Others can keep saying and thinking whatever they want, it is of little significance. Now, what do you plan to do Hiruzen? The Akatsuki plans to collect Bijou, so it is inevitable that they will attack Kanoha at some point. Kirigakure's involvement with Akatsuki has to be investigated too. Sandame nodded, and said, I have several plans in regards to these. And what are they? Both Elder Mitokado and Elder Yudatane were curious. Sandame nodded and explained. After leaving the meeting halfway, Shimura Danzo came to the deepest section of the root base. Entering inside the Forbidden Laboratory 5, he questioned the researchers who were busy carrying out the experiments, any progress? The head researcher replied while stuttering, W, we are s, still in the middle of it, Al, although, the, the data we have is not enough, B, but, bang. Danzo knocked his crutch hard on the floor and said coldly, there is no time, if you fail to perfect the balance between Shodame-sama's cells and Sharingan in my body within a week, well then. I suppose I do not need to remind you of the result that would be awaiting all of you as well as your families, be sure to keep this in mind while you continue your work here. After saying so, Danzo left the laboratory, while the researchers fell on the ground with a pale face. They understand full well what Danzo-sama meant, but they also know that one week is too short to achieve any significant progress. After he has left the laboratory, Danzo was walking towards the core area of the base as his lips arched in a cold sneer, Hiruzen, you are getting old, aren't you? You may try to not let it affect you as much as you can, but I see it full well, your strength, is nowhere near as it used to be. Kanoha needs a new Hokage, one who can lead the village to its most glorious days, and then further, and you are clearly not up to the task, never were, and never will be. As a former comrade in arms, Danzo is much aware of the rising frailty of Sarutobi Hiruzen, and because of this Danzo is more and more confident of taking the position of Hokage from Hiruzen. As for the disbandment of Root? If Hiruzen believes that he can just dismiss me as the commander of Root subdivision and that will be the end of it all, then he is sorely mistaken. The Root is not just a subdivision of Umbu Black Ops, Root is my personal force, and no matter what happens, they will only follow my commands. Besides, it's not as if he is aware of how deeper Kanoha's foundation truly is, thought Danzo with a cold smirk. Danzo muttered, it's about time Uchiha Itachi stopped playing those foolish shinobi games too, as he spoke, Danzo's figure disappeared into darkness. On Kuroto's side. After two days of rest and recuperation, Kuroto summoned Gara to have a talk with him regarding what happened to Yandame Kazakage. Kuroto-sama, how is your injury? The kid asked Kuroto with a worried expression. Kuroto replied, I am alright there is no need to worry. As you can see for yourself, I can move quite perfectly now. Gara nodded, he was relieved, then asked, so um, you mentioned that you wanted to have a talk with me. Kuroto nodded and after a while of silence he decided to break the news bluntly, your father, the Yandame Kazakage of Sunagekir, is now dead. Gara's eyes widened. I see. 
he muttered ever so slowly, then he lowered his head in silence. Externally he was silent, but internally his mood is in turmoil. He did not know what to feel about the death of his father. The same father who has never cared about him, and viewed him as nothing more than a beast, and ordered Yashimaru to kill him, and also attempted to execute him. Then why, why? What is this feeling? Am I feeling sad? Thought Gara, then suddenly remembered, what, what about Temari, and Kankuro? Are, are they alright? Kuroto nodded, they should be fine, although I am not sure how they will take this news. Gara was silent again, then asked, and, and what will happen to the village? Kuroto said, you don't need to worry about the village. I have plans for that, neither is there any need to worry about your siblings. I have plans for them too, what I want you to focus on is upon yourself. Gara nodded silently as his thoughts wandered all over. Kuroto thought a little and said with an expectant look, Garakuen. Gara lifted his head with a questioning look. Kuroto said, Garakuen, I have to go and take care of a few things, can I entrust you to protect this place and Karenchan in my absence? Gara was silent for a while, then nodded with a determined look. Kuroto ruffled Gara's hair with a gentle smile then left Sky Fortress and quietly sneaked inside Kanoha, specifically inside his secret laboratory. Here he met up with the Kazakage puppet that has been covering him for the past few days. First thing first, Kazakage puppet handed a scroll to Kuroto and said, As per your instructions, I sealed Samui's soul inside this scroll using, Kanshin Betsuri no Jutsu, soul body separation technique. Kuroto nodded then took the scroll from Kazakage puppet, and observed the state of the seal. Well, that's right, the reason for Samui's brain-dead state is indeed Kuroto. He had previously ordered the Kazakage puppet to seal her soul. The soul extracted using, Kanshin Betsuri no Jutsu, will lose all their memories, and Kuroto has some plans of using Samui's soul. After he has confirmed that everything will the soul was alright, he put the scroll inside his shinobi bag then looked at the Kazakage puppet and asked, what all things happened in my absence? Kazakage puppet said, after the Kanoha's Hokage returned from the failed raid, he held an elder council meeting. I am not sure how that proceeded, but there seems to be some tension between him and Shimura Danzo. Kuroto frowned, and the reason? Kazakage puppet shook his head and said, I am not sure, while the elder council meeting was being held, all the umbu and other personnel who participated in the raid were summarizing intelligence then have gained about Akatsuki and Amatsukami. Kuroto nodded, while Kazakage puppet continued, after the elder council meeting was completed, Hokage held a jonin council meeting and announced the news to all the jonin, although some key points were not revealed, like the exact death count, and the identity of Nagato and Konan being Jiraiya's disciple, and so on, but even then it did cause a panic among the villagers, especially the missing status of Yandame Kazakage. Kuroto nodded, this was within his expectation. The combined force of the three villages not only was unable to subdue Akatsuki but in fact suffered great loss, it would be strange if it did not cause panic among the villagers. Kazakage continued, after the Jonin Council meeting was held, Hokage dispatched two different squads on two missions. I was unable to find out what were the specific details of the mission, but I did confirm that one squad went to the land of earth, while the other ventured to the land of water. Kuroto nodded and thought, while the mission to the land of earth might still be fine, but it would be surprising if the squad that is going to the land of water will be able to find anything useful, the way it is currently, that country is not so easy to sneak it. Kazakage puppet said, firstly there was intelligence summarization. Kuroto nodded. This part is obvious. Although the raid was a total failure, intelligence summarization is still very important. Corresponding countermeasure strategies will be formulated using all this intelligence. Kazakage puppet continued, there have also been several changes internally. The first order he issued is towards the noble shinobi clans, all the retired shinobi who are in a position to continue active shinobi life will again start to work, as well as, some of the other clan shinobi who are not registered in Kanoha's shinobi directory will also register themselves. Kuroto was stunned, then nodded stiffly, this was unexpected, but if I think about it, it doesn't seem so strange either. Kuroto's own ninja registration number is 010842, which means officially there have only been about 010841 academy graduates before him. It wouldn't even be wrong to assume that of these 10841, at least, 50-60% to 60 have died in active duty. They may have died in some sort of simple mission or maybe during a war, or perhaps during the Kyuubi's attack on Kanoha. These 50-60% to 60 also include disabled, traumatized, those who went rogue. Or those who retired, and so on. So, only about 30 to 40 percent of shinobi are left, who are still on active duty. In the canon, the ninja registration number of Uzumaki Naruto was 012607. And Sarutobi Kanoamaru's ninja registration number was 012707. This means, there have only been about 12,707 official academy graduates by the time, Sarutobi Kanoamaru graduated from the ninja academy which also included the deceased. The shinobi of Kanoamaru's generation did not participate in the fourth great shinobi war. 
And yet, despite all this, the coalition of five great shinobi villages was able to assemble a total force of 80,000 shinobi. If we assume that about 10,000 samurai from the land of iron participated in the war, then the entire coalition consisted of 70,000 shinobi. On average, each village dispatched about 14,000 shinobi, although this estimate is obviously incorrect because the strength of each village was not the same. For example, the number of Sunagakure shinobi and Kirigakure shinobi was obviously less because of their weak strength. But even if we disregard this key point and use the ideal situation, there were about 14,000 shinobi from each village. Where did so many shinobi come from? The number of official graduates by the time of Kanoamaru's generation was only about 12,707, which obviously included deceased and all. Even if all the official academy graduates are counted, Kanoha couldn't have dispatched 14,000 shinobi. So where did so many shinobi come from? The answer to this question is very simple. Those numbers reached such a digit by including the unofficial shinobi, the unregistered ones. These unregistered shinobi are clan members that are not part of the official shinobi system that a village follows. Each clan has hundreds of unregistered shinobi and these unregistered shinobi are under the command of the patriarch of the clan, they are not under Hokage's command. And the number of unregistered shinobi easily amounts to thousands, therefore, they are not to be underestimated as they are a very powerful force. Take Hyuga clan as an example, other than Hyuga Hayashi, the current patriarch of the Hyuga clan, almost none of the other members of the main house are registered shinobi, as a result, they rarely venture out of the village on official missions. Even many members of the branch house are also the same, they are unregistered shinobi, they carry out missions assigned to them by the patriarch, not by the Hokage. Of course, Kuroto's fiancé, Hyuga Yui is also an unregistered kunoichi. And this is also why the existence of Uchiha Tsukihai, who sacrificed herself in an attempt to defeat Shino is not so unbelievable. This is also the reason why Uchiha Shinichi, Uchiha Abito, and Orochimaru were not so skeptical about her, there are hundreds of unregistered shinobi and kunoichi, it wouldn't be strange if Uchiha Tsukihai was also one of those. Ordering these unregistered shinobi and kunoichi to take on active duty is obviously touching the personal interest of noble shinobi clans but in the face of the great threat posed by Akatsuki and Amatsukami he doesn't have much of a choice here. Hokage-sama has issued such an order, I wonder what benefits he will be giving to all the clans, thought Kuroto silently. After getting some more information from the Kazakage puppet, especially about the status of Team 11, Kuroto released the Shoten no Jetsu shape-shifting technique and sent Kazakage puppet back to anchor Vantian. While he, himself went into his house. And while Kuroto was trying to sneak into his own house he noticed Yui being present at his house, and sighed, looks like I will have to walk in from the front door. Giving up on his earlier plans, Kuroto walked inside from the main gate. I am home, Kuroto said announcing his presence. Kuroto-kun, you are finally, back. As soon as Yui realized that Kuroto is back, she hurried towards him and hugged him tightly. Kuroto was surprised, he hurriedly caught her to prevent their fall, and let her hug him. After the two had stood in the same position for a few minutes already, Kuroto asked while rubbing her back gently, what's wrong? You seem unusually worried Yui. Although he was being casual outside, internally Kuroto was really panicked, I just hope she doesn't realize my injuries, please don't realize it, please don't. Asked by Kuroto, she lifted her head and said with a gentle smile, there is nothing wrong, it's just that you haven't been home for the past few months, I missed you a lot so I got a little emotional, that's all. Kuroto nodded, he brought his head closer to her left ear, and whispered lightly, well, I am back now, aren't I? Yui nodded and was about to say something when suddenly she noticed bandages wrapped around Kuroto's back through the gap in his collar. Yui's face turned serious, kuroto Kuen, you, you are injured, aren't you? Kuroto panicked, oh come on, how the hell did she realize it even without using the Byakugan? I am perfectly sure that all my body movements are perfectly normal. Kuroto hurriedly said, don't worry these are just some skin injuries, we'll be healed soon enough. Yui gazed at Kuroto's face for a few seconds, then without saying much, she bit her lower lip and helped Kuroto walk inside. Kuroto sighed and did not resist her help. To be honest he was really having some problem walking normally but made sure that it did not appear on his face until his facade was seen through by Yui. After seating on the chair, Yui said silently, I will call a medical neen. However, before she could go, Kuroto held her hand and said, Yui, my injuries are not serious, it will be fine in a short while, having a medical neen is not needed, moreover, they wouldn't be able to solve the problem in the first place. Yui said, but. Kuroto did not allow her to reason with him and quickly said, trust me, this is not a problem that a medical neen can solve. Yui deeply looked at Kuroto's eyes, those eyes that were asking her to not call a medical neen. Yui is already aware of what happened to the Tri-Alliance in their raid against Akatsuki. She is not a jonin, but she is very much aware of the devastating defeat that Kanoha suffered. She was really worried because Kuroto hasn't been home for the past few months. There was even no update in his status, she was really flustered. 
especially considering how dangerous Akatsuki is and how high the death toll of Umbu in the recent raid is. Yui was obviously worried that something might have happened to him. Even after so much time had passed since the news of the raid was announced, there was no update in his status. Nor was there any news from him. Those working in Umbu generally die silently, she was worried that she might receive a death notice soon. Even if she trusts his strength, even if she believes in his promise, as a woman, she can't help but be worried. So when she noticed that Kuroto has come back safely she was relieved, also a bit emotional she couldn't stop the urge to hug him tightly. Just when she thought that he has safely returned, she realized that he is seriously injured, being seriously injured is nothing new for a shinobi, so she is worried, but also happy that Kuroto Kuen has come back alive. She was glad that he is at least alive, and the injury can be treated by a medical nin. But he refuses to let medical nin check upon his situation? While Yui was busy in thought, Kuroto pulled her towards him, with the distance between the two very minimal, he said, I am sorry for making you worried. How can Kuroto not notice the worry in her eyes? He had realized it but chose not to bring it up. Yui shook her head and said, It's not a problem Kuroto Kuen, so long as you are safe, everything is alright. Kuroto nodded and said, Don't worry, nothing will happen to me. Yui nodded and did not say anything more. At this time Kuroto asked, By the way, while I was coming home, I noticed that the atmosphere in the clan was a bit downcast, did something happen? Yui nodded and said, Four days ago, Himeji-sama passed away. Kuroto sighed, he wasn't much surprised, but asked nonetheless, was it a natural death, or? Yui replied with a sad expression, it was a natural death. Sensei's health had already started to decline even before her second pregnancy, and after she gave birth to Hanabi-chan her health deteriorated further, she was mostly on bed rests, and four days ago, she passed away. Kuroto nodded, I see. Both sat in silence. Hyuga Himeji, name assumed, wife of Hyuga Hayashi, mother of Hyuga Hinata, and Hyuga Hanabi, and also Yui sensei passed away, huh? How is Hayashi-sama? Kuroto asked. Yui said with a bit of melancholy, he seems to be doing fine on the outside, but internally. Kuroto nodded, I will go to meet him after I recover. Yui nodded, and said, two days prior to her demise, Himeji-sama asked me to be Hinata-chan's sensei. Kuroto nodded, it's not strange I guess, you are her only disciple, so it is quite obvious that she would entrust you with this, besides, your strength should have also reached the level of an elite jonin, so her choice is quite thoughtful. Yui nodded silently. At this time, Kuroto asked again, and where is Shayan-chan? Yui said, she is living at my home for the past few months. You are mostly out on missions Kuroto Kuen, and well Patriarch was worried about her safety so she is living at my home, besides, I have to also instruct Hinata-chan on these things, so it's better to have Shayan-chan stay with me. Kuroto nodded gratefully. Sorry for causing you so much trouble. Yui shook her head and said with a smile, It's not really a problem, well, Okasan and Otosan have taken a liking to her, and really spoil her, ahaha. Ah, ah. I don't blame them, she is indeed kawaii, and also. Yui stopped midway as she suddenly remembered something that her Okasan and Otosan have started to pester her about. Kuroto asked in confusion, What's wrong? Asked by Kuroto, Yui suddenly lowered her head as a visible blush appeared on her face, We, well. Okasan and Otosan have been asking me for a while now? Kuroto asked with a frown, what are they asking? Yui raised her face, but she did not match her eyes with Kuroto and said, we, well, they have been asking when are we going to, you know, going to, let them see, faces of their grandchildren. Cough cough, cough cough, Kuroto suddenly coughed. Yui hurriedly said, I have already told Okasan repeatedly that even if I and Kuroto Kuen have slept together a few times, it was just casual sleeping, we have yet to break the final wall. B? Besides, we are too young to have children, and we aren't even married yet, so having children is more of a distant thought, but she just wouldn't listen. Kuroto sighed and bowed his head in apology, it's my fault. I have been too busy with my goals, that I. Shu, however, Yui did not allow Kuroto to complete his words, she covered Kuroto's mouth with her fingers, as she brought her head closer to him, and now with their foreheads touching together, she said seriously, Shu, never apologize Kuroto Kuen, never. It's not your fault, your goals are my goals, your dreams are my dream, your happiness is my happiness, you are my pride and joy Kuroto Kuen, you are everything to me, we can have children when we feel we are ready, for now focus on accomplishing your dream Kuroto Kuen. I may not have the strength to stand by your side, but I will always be watching you from behind. I will always be there whenever you need me, for I have always and will always love you more than anything in the world, after she finished speaking, she kissed Kuroto's forehead. After Yui had kissed his forehead, Kuroto held her, brought her face closer to his, eyes gazing at each other's without blinking, her lips closer to his, eyes closed in expectation, and lips gently touched, they felt soft, slight moist, and warm.